Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Sarah and I'm a biochemist and hypnotist and a quantum biologist, if you don't know me already. And today we're going to talk about what the mitochondria make. So most people just think the mitochondria make ATP and that's the end of it. So here in this little very short video, we'll go through what else they do because they make and do far more than we think. Just to set the scene, because I know people have different levels of scientific knowledge. So mitochondria, yes, they do turn um, food into energy. That's the most basic function. And then the food that we eat would get broken down into fat, glucose and amino acids. Obviously, ketones are involved in here as well, either the ones you make yourself or say if you ate some MCT oils. But what's important here is or all of these things, the fat and the glucose and the amino acids, ultimately are going to be broken down into acetyl-CoA and electrons. And this happens inside the mitochondria because the electrons, not the carbs or the sugar or whatever, or the ketones are what, are what runs the show. So we need to kind of get over this idea of energy coming from sugar or fat or whatever. So electrons are what provides the, the energy to, to run what's called the electron transport chain inside the mitochondria, which for some people, they thought it was just a molecular battery and other people know it. they do more. Let's see what else they do. For example, we know that mitochondria make energy, which is ATP, but they also make exclusion zone water. And people used to think that was a waste product, but I'm beginning to wonder if the exclusion zone water is actually just as important, if not more important, than the ATP. Now, exclusion zone water is really important for internal hydration of the cells. It's important for effective communication through the body. It acts as a reservoir of, of protons in the cells, a reservoir um, or, or buffer against toxins just to keep things simple. And literally there are hours and hours and hours and books on um easy water or exclusion zone water. For example, Gerald Pollock's work, and he is going to be coming on this YouTube channel soon. And then we also have heat or infrared. So anybody who's familiar with, say, um, red light panels and the benefits that they offer, you can actually make your own infrared yourself your mitochondria, if they're working properly, will make infrared. So effectively, you can get infrared from the inside. And infrared light has multiple benefits, including expanding the exclusion zone uh, of water. So we've once again, things start to tie in together. Then another thing which I made a video about would be carbon dioxide, because people again think this is just a waste product, but it's actually a signaling molecule. And then of other interest to people would be light. The mitochondria produce light as well in the form of, of an electron. And the reason light is important is it's a means of communication in the body and bacteria in the gut microbiome can communicate via light. And so can the mitochondria and the immune system. So it's basically like the mitochondria producing light is sort of like a beacon or a firework show that sometimes it'll produce lots of light, say if it's under distress and when it's ticking along nicely, it produces less light. And then finally, just for today, the mitochondria can produce hormones. And the ones that are important are pregnenolone, which is the master steroid hormone of which all of your other sex hormones are produced. The mitochondria also produce melatonin. So people think melatonin just comes from the pineal gland, but the mitochondria make it as well. And it's not quite the, the sort of the same function. And then also mitochondria have a role in making dopamine too. So that's really important for, for people's mood. So we have these compounds. Something else that mitochondria make are monoamine oxidases, but they only make those when they're distressed. So that would mean it, distressed mitochondria are going to be doing things like encouraging you to break down your serotonin, your dopamine, your noradrenaline. Hopefully from that short description, you can see that the mitochondria are much more than just a battery that makes energy. And uh, there's going to be situations where the mitochondria are under pressure or, or distress. That would be, say, when you're on an airplane or when you're ill. 
And then there are going to be times when our mitochondria are more, we'll say, pleased, like with being outside in the sunlight. Exercise is something that pressurizes them to start with, but it makes them stronger later. And then we could go into a whole load of different videos about different aspects of nutrition, which favor or disfavor mitochondria. But the main take home message for today was that the mitochondria are a lot more than just a battery. So thanks for watching and feel free to comment.